Let's stand and sing. Let's raise the hallelujah day and lift the roof off.
walk in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing. Amen. Amen. And so if the devil has convinced you this week or last week or in your life that you're facing the impossible, no. He can turn graves into gardens. He can turn pain into wellness. He can take parking lots and turn them in church houses preparing to worship him. Amen. Come on, Dad. Lead us in this song.
children of the king, amen. He's taken sinful wrecks just like me and changed them to be right in the sight of God. It's not about me. It's about him. We love to sing songs of rejoicing and excitement and praise. But sometimes we don't always feel like jumping up and down but that everything's perfect. Sometimes we hurt. Sometimes we hurt through a relationship. Sometimes we hurt because our kids are sick or ill or something to do with school or something in the workplace. Sometimes, as an adult, as a parent, we just need to be helped.
which I committed unto him against that day. Listen, if you're a child of the king, the world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. You are a child of the king. Proclaim that today. Are you a child of the king? Say amen. Say amen. Here's your testimony. When you walk out of church today, Satan's going to jump off the side. He's going to say, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. Listen, Satan is a liar. We have come together today in the name of Jesus to praise and worship him. But you've done that. You can be seated. We're going to fool around and have church here. Jesus is on the throne. Amen. If we have much to come forward, we'll continue to worship in our giving. If you're visiting here today, you got a visitor's card. Throw that in the offering plate. We'd love to get to meet you and know you better. Thank you, Usher. We had Baptist Men's Day a couple of weeks ago. We had a men's choir. I appreciate the men of our church that are willing to stand up and take a lead in their homes and lead their family to the cross. Amen. Let's pray, Father. We love you. It's so good to be in your house, Lord. Your spirit is powerful. We have praised you in word. We have praised you in song. We have praised you with your hands. We have praised you with our feet. We have praised you with the instruments. And now we're going to praise you with our finances. Lord, take our tithes and our offerings and our operation of joy and do that amazing thing that you do. Bless it, multiply it, and use it for the upload of your kingdom, Jesus. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. you guys. Um, Jason and Jeremy are both out of town and so our son Corey's played today um, and our grandson Hudson. Didn't they do a great job? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said in the first service, Corey stood down here off the side and Hudson stood up here on top and I think he was perching because that was the first time he had been as tall as his dad. 
And so I mentioned it in the first service, and when I looked back here in the second service, Corey didn't let that happen the next time he was up here on top. That's a dominant thing that just happened, Pastor. It just happened. Yes. Cindy, come on. We've got a special song this morning. And, um, if you, ladies, if you don't know Cindy Moody, Cindy is our women's ministry leader. Um, she's got all kind of amazing things going on. If you haven't been connected um, to the women's ministry, you need to get a hold of Cindy because they're just doing some great, great stuff. We appreciate you, Cindy. Come and share.
I've seen our children walk into the, the joy zone. You know, uh, if you don't have any children before too long, your church is going to die away. And so uh, I'm happy for those children. Just excited to see them here and learning about Jesus in there and how much God loves them. Isn't that so amazing? i got to say, uh, Cindy did a fantastic job on that song. And uh, I'm, I'm very thrilled. That song actually goes right with our sermon today, and uh, it's it's <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful how God puts things together. So I'm going to open up in prayer, and then we'll go to jump into God's Word and, and uh, see what He's got to say to us today. So let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Just thanks so much for the many blessings you've given us, Father. I thank you for that day that we'll be able to see you face to face. We'll be able to stand in your very presence, and we are longing for that even today. God, I, I, I think as I get older, I think about that more and more. And I'm just so thankful that, that you are God alone and that well, I can spend eternity with you. You provided that salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And God, as we're here today, as we open your word, I ask that you would just speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Father, we have so many things going on in this world. and We need to just focus on what you're doing in our lives and in our very midst and how much we need to see you. God, we know we have people that are out sick, we know people that are traveling, uh, people that are uh, tutors and competitions and stuff, and God, we just ask that you would have your hand upon those and bring them back to us next time. But right now, Father, help us to think about you. Think about how much you love us. We love you and we thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, if you're visiting, I do this every Sunday. It's not by accident. I say, raise your sword, ready to go into battle. This right here means the, so, so much. It means the world to me. Hopefully it means the world to you. A man cannot live by bread alone. By every word that out of the mouth of God. Do you believe that? Amen. No, really, do you believe it? Amen. Because what we're going to talk about today, you need to believe. Amen. You need to believe. Okay. Uh, I want you to pause just for a second. If you have been walking through the study of Revelation with us, you can see where we're at. If you remember last week, we saw that everyone that was evil, everything that had to do with sin, Satan, the Antichrist, uh, the demons, the false prophet, all those who were lost were cast into the bottomless pit. They were cast into what's called the lake of fire, which is the final judgment, right? It's all gone. It's all. It's out of here. There's no more of that on that. We, it's, it's done. And so today what we're going to talk about is a day that you and I have never seen before. And, and it's amazing. It's exciting. And, and, and it really ought to just speak to you and long for that. I was asking the other day, um, well, not the other day. I asked in the first service, but uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> but I, I said, how many people are really longing for the coming of the Lord that you'll spend eternity in heaven? How many? Let me see your hands. All right, so let me just say this. Most of you are old. <laughs> most, most. When I say that, I mean that in the best of all intentions. It's because as we get older, we long for that even more because we experience this world so much. It's like, man, I can't wait for that day to come. I can't wait for that day to come. And so we, we want you to know that I want you, when I was younger, I was like, boy, I got all my life to live. I can do all kinds of things. Let's go. I did some crazy stuff on motorcycles that I shouldn't speak about. But man, <laughs> if you only knew. It's a miracle I'm still standing here. God had his hand on me. But uh, when we're younger, we think we've got all our life to live. And as we get older, we're like, I don't have a whole lot longer to live, and I want more to spend time with Christ. 
And it's like, I, I'm longing for that. We're going to talk about all that today. And God has, God has been good to us, and we're walking through this. And I hope you long for that, too, because I want you to be with me. Guys, I want you to be in heaven with me, every one of you. Every one of our teams. Every one of you. I, I want you all to be in eternity with me. So as we look forward to what God's going to do, only God can do these things. And, and, and so take your Bible. We're, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 21. We've only got two more chapters left. We've only got two more chapters left. And, and then we'll, we'll go into some other stu studies. I'm probably going to preach the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is, is a fantastic book. But from this point on, listen to me, from this point on, the only people left that we're going to be talking about are Christians. The only people that we're going to be looking at are those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who have been washed by His precious shed blood on the Calvary. Those are the only people that we're looking at now. Yeah. And if you can't say that you're a Christian today, then you need to be looking at what you're missing. What you're going to be missing. So, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Look what it says here. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there's no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. The bride. The bride of Christ is who? Christians, those who are saved, we're the bride. I know some of you tough guys, I'm not a bride, I'm a groom. I'm a bride of Christ. Okay? I'll just tell you that right now. We're not that kind of church, but I'll just tell you right now, we're men, we're men, and we're the bride, okay? Uh, but anyway, long story, but different stuff, okay? So, I am longing for this day. I look forward to this day. For several reasons, and we're going to look at a lot of them today. But I want you to know that, listen to me when I say this, the rapture can happen at any time, at any moment. Things have been getting set up, they're getting them put into motion about things that could happen in this world. And even just this past week, a big thing is happening already. And watch the banking systems, people. Watch the banking system. You know, we had the, the Silicon Valley Bank that failed, and then a couple other banks failed. A lot of them were in the tech market and stuff like that. But dig into it even more. Keep your eyes on it, because right now there's 168 banking systems that are over the whole world that are ready to collapse. One of our states in the United States, one of them, I think it was North Dakota or Montana or something like that, the governor just vetoed because they wanted to start their own government-funded banking system for your protection. Because they're worried about the FDIC because the FDIC only guarantees up to 250000 and most of these banks have like millions and billions of them. But the thing is, the 200... When they say it's for your protection, it's not. Listen to me. Listen to me. We talked about when John wrote this in 70 AD, when John wrote this about the, taking the number, the mark of the B666, the number of man, when he talked about that, he had no idea during that time that you could go to McDonald's and get a sandwich and never give him any money. You just give him a number, it's on a card. It's all controlled electronically. It's at the bank that's covered and controlled by the government. It's real easy to enter in. The Antichrist and his way of controlling people where you cannot buy, sell, or trade anything unless you have the number. I'm telling you, right there. It's all getting set up. I'll just take it even a step further. I don't know where you stand on this shot about the, uh, the virus. You'll take the virus shot if you want to travel. You'll take this virus shot if you want to go to my daughter. Couldn't go to one of these meetings because a training seminar because she didn't take the virus shot because they weren't locked. See what I'm saying? They're already setting you up. You're not, you can't be with us if you don't take the shot. 
control, control. I never did get it. I'm not going to get it. I got him. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. If I die from it, guess what? And it's real. It's killing people. If I die from it, Beulah Land, I'm standing there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Yeah. Threaten me with a good time. I'll take that up anytime. <laughs> Right. Hey, I want you to notice something. Go to verse 1. Go to verse 1 just for a second. Go to verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. They have passed away. We talked about this a little bit last week. I want to go back over just to go a little bit deeper into it. But turn your Bibles back to 2 Peter. 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3. If you do this, if you go to Revelation, then you'll find Jude. You'll find 3 John. You'll find 2 John. You'll find 1 John. And then you're going to find 2 Peter. That's backwards forward. Back, so you've got 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. So it's just a few books back to the left. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. We read this last week, but I'm going to touch on it again this week just for a moment because it ties in with the new heaven and the new earth. The new heaven and the new earth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. I love hearing those pages turn. I really do. Electronics is so much faster. Isn't it? I'm, there. I'm there. All right, here it is. This, this is what the Bible says. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. And the earth and its works will be burned up. It says all these things are to be destroyed in this way. What sort of people ought you to be in the holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, the cause of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent, be found by him, and, and peace, spotless, and blameless. Am I right? Did I go too far? No? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you. Now, Paul, just for a second there, just for a second. I've got to tell you, I always have someone who's not a Christian go, you know, uh, I heard my grandma talk years ago, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming. You better get ready. Turn or burn. All right. Yeah. You, you better get right with the Lord. He's coming. He, it, it, it gets close. And we go like, yeah, all right. They've been saying that for years. Didn't Jesus say he's coming shortly? How short, shortly. Here's the deal. Did you just read what we just read right there? He said, don't take this as slowness, but take it that he's given everyone a chance to repent to come to salvation. In fact, the Bible says that he doesn't want anyone to perish. No, not one. Yeah. Not one's you. He don't want you to perish. I want you to spend eternity in heaven with me. Just think what much fun we're going to have. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You wait. We're not there yet. Wait. But here's the deal. Don't take us, don't take us slowness. He's coming one day. And when I say things are getting closer, they're getting closer and closer. You never had to worry about the banking systems collapsing. You didn't have to all the worry about the shop and all. Everything has fallen into place, people. He's getting us right there to the edge, and at any time he could come. And he says that there's going to, during this time, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth because they've been burned up. Now, think about this for a second. I talked about it a little bit last year, last week. We have three definitions for the word heaven in the Bible. There's three definitions. They use the same word, but they talk about heaven. The first one is the sky. Sometimes you read the translation in the Bible, it says heaven. The word sky is the heaven that they're talking about, where the birds will fly around. You know, they're flying, and they say, okay, look at the heavens. Look how wonderful that is. So the heavens, the birds are flying. And the second one is talking about atmospheres and the stars in the sky. And so they talk about, well, God hung the, the, the stars in the heavens, okay? And so it's talking about that. But then the third heaven that you talk about during the translation of the Bible is the actual place where God resides. 
This time right here is talking about that the new heavens, that the atmosphere, the sky, and the earth is all going to be melted up with heat. Now, I was younger. When I, when I grew up uh, back in the 70s, we used to do something called uh, camp out. <laughs> they, you have no electronics, so you go outside. You had a lawn chair and a sleeping bag and slept under the stars. You might be on a fishing bank. You could be in the backyard. But we sit out there, and I tell you what, out there in the dark, and you tell stories and stuff like that. And you sit out there, and some of the prettiest things you've ever seen is the stars. And you see a shooting star, and like, it's amazing. And I'm kind of wondering, how could it get any better? Because that's our God. I can get in. I've seen some pretty things. I, I will do surveys. Mark said the first service he liked to do surveys. How many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? Raise your hand. I haven't. <laughs> I've never been there. I, I, I've been to the Niagara Falls. You ever been to Niagara Falls? Okay. Canadian side. I looked over. Okay. Uh, I was in. I actually went to Canada. Uh, you ever seen one of the, the redwood forests? Anybody might been the big tree? Oh, boy. I've never been there. <laughs> I'd like to one day. I just never seen it. But when you see the pictures and you got cars driving through them and you got a little tiny guy, he's actually pretty good size, but they're beside this big tree and it looks small. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Listen to me. You ain't seen nothing yet. When God says, I'm going, to have, I'm going to have a new heavens and a new earth, he is going to make something that you never see. Yeah. How exciting is that going to be? Yeah. That's exciting. I, I, I love it. And then, and then the new Jerusalem, the holy city, is going to be descending down to earth. Let me just pause there for a second. We long to go to heaven. If you were die right now and God would uh, take time from the body of the Lord, you're going to spend eternity in heaven, right? Yeah. Uh, until, until this time comes, and then you go spend eternity on the newer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to break that to you, but you're going, we're longing for it now. But it, oh, 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 oh. All right, we'll get there. So we're going to eventually spend eternity on the new earth. Go to, go, go to the end of verse 1, Revelation 21 1. Look at the end of that. Look what it says right there. It says, and there is no longer any sea. Now, in chapter 21, there's seven different things that said that there's no longer going to be any more of this. It's gone. There's no longer going to be any more of this. This is done away with. The first one he says is the sea. The sea. And, and I'm thinking about this, and I started doing some looking. Do you realize that, that three-fourths of the world, the earth that we live on, is covered by bodies of water? Three-fourths of them. And there's no longer going to be any sea. But if you go to 21, 6, chapter 21, verse 6, look what it says there. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. Yeah. One of the bodies of water will be the river of life yeah. on the new earth. And we'll go look where that flows from later on down our study, but we have to come back for that. But when he says the word sea, why didn't he say lakes and other things like, I mean, to break it down a little bit, why just seas? I think that, and after reading what David Jeremiah said, David Jeremiah says that the word sea not only just stands for the water on the earth, because we won't need to have water like we do today, you know. Everybody says, Pastor, you're not drinking enough water while you're preaching, kidney stone man, okay? Uh, drink more water, drink more water. If I drink more water, you know there's no one sitting right here. That's the spraying section, okay? That's what people go, but uh, here's the deal. We won't need to drink the water. We got the, the thirst. If you're a thirsty, you have the, the river of life. But John writes from something, and David Jeremiah talks about this, that's something that he experienced, and I experienced it myself. <laughs> Years ago, mom and dad took me to Myrtle Beach. 
But I got to tell you, the sea's kind of scary. I grew up in the 70s with this movie, The Big Shark. <laughs> Jaws ruined my life. I only go into the water knee deep. Because as soon as I, I mean the toe just touches, and I start hearing, doo -doo. <laughs> it might not be playing, but I hear it. <laughs> the deeper I get, I'm like, no, something touched me. I'm like, Jesus, I'm walking on the water. I'm out of there. <laughs> I, I'm gone. And they take us to Myrtle Beach, and they said, let's go fishing. Let's go deep sea fishing. I'm like, sounds good. I love to fish. I'm ready to go. They put 88 people on the SS Minnow. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's Gilligan's Island. Okay. And so I get on the SS Minnow, and I thought, I'm going to go to the back. <laughs> Wrong place to be. Now, I was good. I was good while I could still see the land. Because I thought, I can swim that far. But when you can't see the land, I'm thinking, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Jaws is going to get me. And we went out there, and the storm, the seas were tossed. That's the theme. So I was, we was rocking back and forth. And the back of the boat, you know what that means? At the back of the boat, as it's moving, the people's hanging over the front of the boat, and they're tossing their cookies. <laughs> I'm really just kind of getting nauseated <laughs> thinking about it. Well, I tossed a bunch of stuff all over the place, and uh, I ended up going in. I, the men go fishing every year. They go to uh, the uh, Lake Erie to go musky. Uh, never going. If it's in a pond, I'll go. Lake Mm, it not be it won't be like here. <laughs> I, I I think like John when he was writing he said there'll no longer be any sea. I'm gonna draw a picture here for you. You're gonna go light bulb. <laughs> think about this. Sin is now gone. Everything that we've looked at, Antichrist, Satan, devil, false prophet, all, all, anybody, anything that is evil is gone. Sin, listen to me, sin will toss you just like the sea. Back and forth. I'm trying to get out of this sin and I keep fighting. I'm back and I'm forth. And, and eventually it can consume you the water get inside your boat and you're going to sink. Reminds me of time in John. Let's go to John. Let's go to, let's go to John. I'm sorry, Mark. We're not to John yet. Mark chapter 4. Go back to Mark chapter 4. Hope what happens here. John chapter, or Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 39. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On that day, when evening came, he said to them, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so, the, so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. Can you, did you see that picture? Did you see what just happened? I mean, Jesus, the, he's asleep on a cushion. 
uh, the boat's filling up full of water. I just kind of imagine all those times. Can you believe this? He's up here sleeping. Let's go. And, and it's like, Jesus, how can you sleep? We're about to die. Where Jesus is, he can calm everything in life. And so whenever John writes about in heaven saying there's no longer going to be any sea, the sin that tosses us back and forth in life, it's just like in Jesus' presence, everything is perfectly calm. That's my God. That is my God. When things are going crazy in your life, quit running to everything else and run to Jesus. And he can rebuke whatever's going on in your life and calm your life. And the day's coming when we're not going to be tossed back and forth anymore. Everything's going to be calm. Everything's going to be perfect calm. No more tossed around. Let's go on to verses 3 and 4. Go back to Revelation 21. Verses 3 and 4. Look what it says here. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no, there will no longer be any death, there will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. The first things have passed away. Now, uh, we see that the tabernacle of God will be among men. I did a lot of studying on the words tabernacle this week. The word tabernacle on, on sanctuary, on worship area, and things like that. And so, imagine in the, in, in the Old Testament you had the, the tabernacle that got moved and God led them. And the, inside the tabernacle had the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant, or what's called the Ark of the Tabernacle, was in the Holy of Holies. And the high priest could only go into there one time a year to do some ceremonial things to ask for forgiveness for the sins of the people. So the Holy of Holies and the, the tabernacle was set apart for a place to worship God, but they could go into that inner sanctuary, let me use that word there, to be in the very presence of God. During this time, guess what? You'll be in his presence. You won't have to worry about a tabernacle, a temple, or a church. You know, we call this Real Joy Community Fellowship, and some people call it Real Joy Church. You call, listen, you call whatever you want. Just come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this is just a building, people. And the Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name, he's there among them. And so when we come here, we have set this room apart to worship the Lord. They're over there setting that room apart over there in the joy zone to worship the Lord. When you're having Bible study in these different rooms, that room is set apart to worship the Lord. Yeah. Now, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you ask Jesus to come into your heart. heart. So guess what? I am taking the sanctuary, the tabernacle, where the place where God resides as like the Holy of Holies. I'm taking him with me in my heart. Amen. So I'm worshiping him wherever I can go. Amen. And so I've got him with me. I've got him in my heart. And that I've got him, my, my traveling tabernacle. Yep. But I'm waiting for that day. Because if you or I were to be in his presence right now, you know what happens? Consumed by fire, because we're sinful nature. We'd be consumed. I'd be done. We are. We out. But this time, we have the imperishable bodies, and we'll be able to be in His presence and not be consumed. Yeah. How awesome is that? Yeah. To be able to be in the presence of God. God, I've heard about you. I've seen you work, but now I can see you. That's amazing. What a day that's going to be. So I, I, I just, I, I look forward to it. Go back to verse 4. Go back to verse 4. Verse 4. Some more things that we're going to lose here. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Pause just for a second. You always hear people say, Boy, I'm going to go to heaven. No more, no more crying up there. And then what's he wiping away? What's he wiping away? And this is what I tell you. Are you, are you listening? There will be crying up to that moment. And from that moment on, he's going to wipe away our tears. 
Uh, years and years ago, my mother and father in law took Trisha and I down to uh, Florida. We went to Universal Studios. And just like any other place where they go through there, they want you to take this the picture so you can pay them $5,000 for your picture. <laughs> and, and they try to get you. And so they took us to, we went to the King Kong exhibit. And there's this big hand that's probably coming up to about here on, on me. And they wanted everybody in the family. We got in the picture. And, and here's my mother in law, my father in law, and my wife. In this big gorilla hand. Here's me. <laughs> I tell you, you think it's bad out there, you gotta be out of here. I do some crazy stuff. And so I was in I was in the, the, the King Kong's hand and I was screaming, ah! That picture was hilarious. Okay? So once again, my movies. I grew up and I had this movie called King Kong. And had that big hand. Now, let's go back. Do you remember when Faye Dunaway fell in the water and he kind of cleans her all up? I imagine that big hand that we were in, kind of like being the hand of God, gently touching our eyes to wipe away our tears. What kind of tears? I think it's going to be like this. I'm thinking that the tears are going to be not one of shame. I, I, I think that the tears will kind of be ones of, I wish I could have done more for you, Lord. I wish when I had the opportunity to witness to someone that I'd have taken that advantage. I think they'll also be kind of happy tears. In 1980, I had my first knee surgery, my first out of three. And uh, back then, knee surgeries come a long way. I mean, a long way. I had uh, my cartilage removed, and they put me in a cast from my hip to my ankle. And um, I had old Dr. Lee. Didn't speak real good English. I understood this. He come in, held my leg up in the air. He says, when you can hold this cast up in the air... You can go home. And he went like this, and my leg went, boom. <laughs> I was like, only weighed 100 pounds. I mean, literally, I, I didn't have any muscle at all. Uh, if I turned sideways, you would miss me. But I was in there for 15 days as a 15-year-old. 15 days. Right at first, it's pretty cool. All your friends come. After the third, fourth day, so I'm in there with me and mom. How many search awards can you do? <laughs> so I'm in there, and it's driving me crazy. And you never knew when Dr. Lee was going to show up. One night he showed up after 15 days. He showed up at 10.30 in the morning. Or 10.30 at night, 10.30 at night. And the nurse was like, I said, do you know if he's coming in today? Because I had it in my mind. I'm going home. <laughs> so I, you just never know with Dr. Lee. Never showed up 1030 at night, pitch dark, just me and my mom. And she was getting ready to leave, go home. And he comes in. He says, how you doing? And we had some little small chat and things good. And he, I said, can I go home? I just want to go home. I want to lay in my own bed. I want to look at my own refrigerator. I want to watch my little black and white television. That's what we had. That's what I had. I want to just go home. And he goes, well, I don't know. My mom started begging. Doc, please let him go home. Please. He's driving me crazy. Because, hey, let's go home. Let's go home. <laughs> All right. Will you do the exercises? Yes, he'll do the exercises. I'll make sure he does the exercises. Will, will, will you come? Physical, yes. Uh, We'll do everything you ask, but let me go home. 10.30 at night, and he goes, I'll let you go home. <coughs> Joy come over me. My mom says, great. And she turns around, and I'm crying. She goes, what are you crying for? I said, I get to go home. I said, you don't understand. I get to go home. You're going home every night, but I finally get to go home. I get to see my ordinary sister, Missy. <laughs> I get to go home. And I was crying. And I kind of imagined 
that's the kind of tears it'll be. Well, we get to go home. We're going to be in heaven with God. I get to go home. And he's going to go, you're here. Don't worry, Tony. You've made it. I imagine that's what it's going to be like. I imagine that's the way it's going to be. Like. Look, and it goes on and says, we lost the sea. We lost the, the, the uh, tears are being wiped away. We've lost tears. We've lost death. We've lost mourning. We've lost crying. We've lost pain. My wife's been in the bed. She's luckily here today, but she's been in the bed with a migraine for the last day, 24 hours. And it started on Thursday, and she's been fighting this thing. And finally got to the point where she was nauseated, and, and she goes, just do something. Ball back, anything, you know? <laughs> And so, could you imagine the day that you won't have any pain anymore? Amen. Get up, you got knee pains, you got back pains, truck driver, okay, you got all this stuff. You know what I'm talking about? You got all kinds of pain, and it's gone. Amen. Do you realize from this point on, you'll never go to another funeral home? Amen. There'll no longer be any crying or, or mourning of the loss. There'll be no sorrow. It is done. It is done. And I'm longing for that day. Amen. Longing for it. But until he comes, we still got a job to do. We still got a job to do. Can you imagine this? When I, I say this, oh, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? No more crying at funerals. Do you realize that this day there'll never, ever be any more depression? No more depression. No more mood swings. You're telling on yourself. Everything's going to be calm. New heavens, new earth, holy city, new Jerusalem coming down to earth. And we get to spend it in his presence. Let's go to verses 5 through 8. 5 to 8. Look what it says here. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my, my son. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Which is the second death. And I see those words there. And it says, he who sits on the throne said, I'm making all things new. That's the first time that God is talking to the world again. Go to Revelation 1, verse 8. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Look what it says here. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God. The Lord God. God talks again in verse 5 and says, He who sits on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. God, the creator of all things, means he's making things new. Now that word making there goes like this. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Making all things new. That word making all things new is like this. Let me just kind of walk you through this. He's made a new heavens, the stars and sky. He's made a new earth. The holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down. And he says he's making all things new. So if you are one of the ones who's accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to spend eternity in heaven. And from this point on, he's making all things new. Which means that if you are in heaven and you are experiencing this right now and you go to do something different, it's going to be a new experience. Yep. And then, guess what? You get done doing that, you're going to go over here. It's a new experience. 
making all things new. So everything you do will be something that you've never experienced. All things new. He saves the best for last. He says, I, I, I've got all this stuff waiting for you. i got all these blessings waiting for you. I, I, all things will be new waiting on you. I can't wait. I can't wait. And look, go to verse 6. Go to verse 6. Here we go. And he said to me, it is done. God speaking there. He said, it is done. That kind of reminds me of something. Go back to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Look what it says here. John chapter 19, verse 30. John 19, verse 30. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. It is finished. All the messianic prophecies that had to do with him being crucified was finished. But you know what else is finished? The payment of sin. The sacrifice that only God, the Lamb of God, could pay in full. He put the salvation process into place. And then we go back to 21.6. God the Father says, it is done. Everything that I've told you, everything that you thought about heaven, everything that said that was coming, where I was going to have this new place for you, I was going to save you from the total damnation in hell, all that is completed through your son, Jesus Christ. And when we're there, it is done. Yeah. It's faithful and true, people. God cannot lie. Yeah. That's the future. New heaven, new earth. So here's the deal. It says in verse 7, I believe it is, that if you're an overcomer, you're going to experience all this stuff. You get to experience the new experiences by the new experiences by the new experience. You get the new experiences. You get all that. The new heaven and new earth. The new Jerusalem. You get all that. And we're going to go into more and more and more here in the next couple of weeks. But you get all that if you're an overcomer. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is waiting for you. But if not, the Bible is pretty clear. If you've never had a time and you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the final judgment will be that you will be sent to the lake of fire. You'll spend eternity away from God as the second death, final judgment. My question is, which one do you want? See, if you're not a Christian, then you have a need of a Savior. Yeah. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life so you can spend eternity with me, so I can spend eternity with you. I want you there. But if not, you're going to be sent to the lake of fire. I'm praying you don't go there. It's not going to be a big party. You will experience torture. Everything that heaven is not is what you're going to experience. We're going to give a hymn invitation here in a moment. And I'm going to ask you to look deep into your heart. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today you can you come forward and say, hey, Pastor, I want to trust Jesus. I want to accept his payment for my sins. I want, I want to go to the new, new heaven and new earth. I want, I want that. I want the holy city. I want to be in God's presence. 
come forward. We'll have someone show you what God's word says. Walk you to another room. Ask you some questions. Walk you through that. We'll never force anyone to do something they don't want to do. Second thing is, maybe looking for a church home. My goodness, God is doing some amazing things here at Real Joy. Amen. Last week, last week, we, we had people join the church. We had a, a family of three join the church during the invitation. Then after the service, we had four more people say, hey, we want to join this church. Yes. So we had seven people join the church last week. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Maybe you'd like to be a part of this church. Just come forward and say, hey, I want to join this church. We'll have a, someone walk you to another room, a deacon or someone, and we'll walk you to another church, ask you some questions, fill out some paperwork. We'd love to have you be a part of this church. Instead of the church that you go to, that's, your, that's my church. That's my church. We want you here. Amen. Maybe we won't come to the altar and pray. I, I have no idea. But let me say this. God has created all that in the future because he wants to give it to you. Do you want it? Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Let's thank you so much for your word, how it speaks to us. And God, as we've looked at the new heaven and the new earth, Father, we know that the old will pass away. I can't imagine what it's going to be like. I'm excited just even thinking about what it's going to be like. And God, you saved the best for last. <laughs> how amazing that's going to be. God, i got to believe that in, in a room... This full, there's got to be someone that needs to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So God, I'm praying that you move in their heart that today they would step out and say, I want to trust them today. Father, give them the courage to make that first step. Maybe there's someone here today saying, you know what, I need a church home. I need to serve the Lord. And I want it to be real joy community fellowship. Give them that courage to step out and say, I want to be part of this church today. Father, I pray right now that we as a church Father, we start reaching the lost. We start reaching the half-hearted Christian, Father. That we start knowing and looking for that day that could come at any moment that we get on fire for you to tell others about Jesus. God, whatever decision it might be right now, I'm praying you stir it in the hearts like only you can do. And we ask all this in Jesus' name.